Hello and welcome to my Benedict guide for triangle strategy. So is Benedict worth using and where does he fit in a team comp? So I would say overall Benedict is worth using and he is a utility role that can sometimes smack things for some damage, but mostly he's going to be buffing other allies as well as increasing their effectiveness. So if we go to the roster, uh, right now I am doing the golden path so i have like just a few units i'm just finishing leveling everyone up to 50 because some of these units i don't use but let's go to benedict let's look at his abilities so he has pretty high physical defense as you can see here he has 64 at level 50 uh, that's pretty good that's without any other items that boost his defense so that's quite high he has quite high luck uh, which means that he has a decent chance to crit from the front. Uh, you always crit from the back, so that's something to keep in mind. He has pretty good magic defense, and he has, like, kind of average, maybe a little bit above average strength. Uh, his accuracy is quite good as well. Uh, his jump and movement is fine. Uh, it's nothing too crazy, but he's surprisingly tanky, and he has almost 500 health. Um, I'm also using an HP ring, which just gives him 10 more, so basically 45 health at max level. Uh, he wants, I would say speed is good on him, like speed speed and health items are good on him just to make him act more often, uh, but alright, let's jump into his abilities. Alright, Raging Beast, 2 TP, raises an ally's strength and magic for 3 turns. So, this ability is decent for just boosting damage on an ally. Uh, he has more powerful, high impact abilities that are quite, that I, in my opinion are better than this, so I wouldn't recommend running this unless you're in the early game. Like, you can use it every now and then just to deal some damage, like to increase damage dealt. But I would say this is something you're not going to be using often. Uh, next, he has Bulwark. This is really good in hard mode, just to make, like, tanks or things that are going to be absorbing damage a little bit tankier. It just raises their physical defense and magic defense for three turns. It only costs one TP, so you can use this every turn. Uh, Bird of Prey raises allies' movement and jump. This also costs 1 TP, so when he is out of TP, these are two things he can spam. Uh, Bird of Prey is definitely circumstantial. There's there's instances where increasing jump is useful, just to like increase unit mobility. But overall, I would say it's not something you're going to be using often on him. Now is definitely something you're going to be spamming as much as humanly possible on him. This is one of his best abilities, so... Um, this the, like uh, Personally, I use this the most on him. Uh, but all it does is it just moves an ally's turn order after yours. So the best thing to do with now is if you need, if a unit would die and you can move them with now, like if you can get them to safety, uh, if you want to just have an ally whose turn order is like way far out, just act sooner. Maybe it'll help spike a boss or kill a, like an incoming enemy unit or something. This is generally how you use this. It can be offensive or defensive. You know, you can now a healer and she can heal again or, you know, whatever. So you can, it's it's just it's just a refresh. It's like dancing in Fire Emblem. So that's essentially what it does. Uh, then he also has initial TP plus. So he starts the match with four TP, which is useful for one specific reason. Uh, he also has twofold turn. So whenever it's this ally's turn, they can act twice. So kind of similar to how Anna works. Um, if you use this on Anna, she can attack four times, because she can attack twice, then that's the end of her turn, and then she can attack two more times. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. So that could trigger four follow-up attacks on a boss. So that is, that's pretty big value if Anna's turn is coming up, so something to consider. Um, then you have Remain Calm. He has immunity to Silence, Fury, and Temptation. Uh, this is quite good for avoiding... These status effects, like these really hard to control status effects. Uh, Fury can be annoying when used on your units because then they'll just do basic attacks. Uh, Silence is actually very powerful. And Temptation just causes enemy, or causes your units to fight for the enemy, which is bad. So, pretty useful to have. It's not He's not going to be in the front lines, really, where he's going to be getting these cast on him often, but it's still useful to have. And you get it for free, so whatever. You get it as you level up. Alright, Dragon Shield. This ability is insane. So it can hit up to five allies in a plus shape, and it gives all of them one hit of in invincibility. So no matter how much damage they would take, it's just converted to zero, and then the invincibility ends. 
Uh, the upside of this is that you can use it right away and it can make five units take any amount of damage. So let's say you put it on all your backliners and then as the fight goes on, some enemies get through and maybe they get a combo off on your backliners. It could save them from death easily. So this, this now in twofold turn are his best skills. And then Bulwark is circumstantially useful and Raging Beast is circumstantially useful. And then Bird of Prey is like, I would say less... Like, it's, it's also circumstantially useful, but I would say Bulwark and Raging Beast are more commonly used than Bird of Prey. Now, it depends on the map. If you want to climb, you know, like some kind of high ground, and this makes makes or breaks a difference for unit being able to climb, this could be good. Uh, but generally, he's much better off spamming now two-fold turn in Dragon Shield and, and working with Julio or Medina to be fed TP. So, okay. So let's go over his upgrades. Okay, so his first upgrade is just damage, plus 5 damage. Uh, and then we have plus 10 health, uh, plus 1 strength, plus 1 physical defense, plus 1 magic defense. So he has very vanilla basic upgrades for tier 1. The damage isn't the most useful because he's not going to be... If he's whacking things, like, he can, and it's fine, and sometimes it can help, like, finish a kill. Uh, but he should generally be spamming now two-fold turn and Dragon Shield. And then if he's not, he should probably just be waiting or using an item. Uh, having him whack things can be useful in some instances because, like I said earlier, he has average... A little bit above average strength and pretty good accuracy. So he can deal, like, a you know, 50 to 100 crit damage on an enemy at level 50, so that's not bad. And then obviously he'd hit even harder if I had increased his damage more, but uh, I'm not about to waste, I don't have enough superior stones for that shit yet, so we'll get to it when we get to it, but it's not a priority. So him getting damage is not a priority at all. Uh, him getting health is fine, you can get it, it's decent. Him getting strength, I would say, is also not a priority. Uh, him getting defense is fine. Uh, none of these tier ones are really a priority, and they're not really needed either. He's already quite tanky without them, and him dealing more damage is not very useful. So most of his tier 1 upgrades are just, like, almost worthless. So, I mean, you can get them if you have the resources, but I wouldn't prioritize them. If you have other units that are competing for these, for, for cash, for upgrades, or for these resources for upgrades, this, this can be something you do, like, last. Uh, next we have the tier 2, another damage and health. You can run these if you want, um, just like with the, these ones. His main utility like in your party is refreshing units with now uh, causing them to be more offensive with twofold turn and making units tanky with dragon shield so these are not critical or even necessary if you want to get them you can get them but you can see here both of them cost superior stone and superior resources this is i am at end game on a new game plus and this is how many superior stones i have and i still have all these other units that are not upgraded i'm 120 hours into the game so, wasting superior stones on irrelevant upgrades, if you're just planning on beating the game once or twice, is not worth it. So, don't do it. <laughs> Alright, speed plus. Definitely useful. Um, it increases his turn order. Sometimes he might be able to go twice over, the, like, the grand scheme of things. So, this is always useful. Always get these uh, on any unit. If you, can, if you can get speed and you're going to run the unit, always get it. Uh, increase the effects of Raging Beast, and then increase the effect of Bulwark, both useful. Um, you know, he's not always going to have 3 to 4 TP to use his big value skills. So sometimes being, allowing units to be a little bit more tanky or a little bit more damaging for lower TP cost is useful. Uh, especially if you have like Roland and he has like an attack lined up where you can get like 4 enemies. And it's like a crit from behind or something. If you use Raging Beast in that instance, you could deal fat damage. So there are circumstances where... Both of these are quite good, so I would say these are kind of worth it. Uh, if you don't plan on using either of these, and you're just going to use Medina and Julio as TP factories, then just skip them. Um, and then I would say speed 2, uh, sorry, I was, I was about to say speed 3, but speed up 2 is worth it, because speed is always good. Uh, but you can see here it costs superior timber and stone, which a lot of units are competing for. So like I said, 120 hours in the game. <laughs> Almost done with my second playthrough. Still having a hard time upgrading these last things. So I would say it's not really worth it. Um, unless unless you have the resources to spare. Because I would rather get Dragon Shield, which is much better. Um, Dragon Shield is extremely powerful. It, it allows you to tank 
in an, like an absurd way. Like between Julio and Medina, you can maintain his TP, so he's just constantly casting Dragon Shield and now in twofold turn, and it just makes your team very tanky and very aggressive. So I would say this is much better than speed. Speed is good, and you do want to get this, but you want to prioritize more like damaging units because superior timber is used by like almost every archer. Uh, it's used by a lot of mages. Superior stone is used by a lot of physical classes. So giving him a little bit more speed when his speed stat is already decent is not big value, but if like, you know, you're on your third playthrough, go for it. Uh, okay, so that's his upgrades. I would say this is like not even really worth running. Increase the duration of Bird of Prey by one turn. Like Bird of Prey I don't even think is good. So I just wouldn't, I would just skip this. Uh, okay, so let's go over his positioning. Let's just do like a basic mock battle. Um, I just beat this one with Kohog, which is hilarious. I think that's how you say his name. Um, I still need to beat these ones. I just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, the main reason is they just have quality stone and timber. This one's worth it because of the superior, so. Alright, so let's do... I guess, what's this? Is? Or what's this one? Uh, reinforcements. Oh, there's no way I can do that with my with my B team. I have units. I can try this. All right. Most of these units aren't units I regularly use. Um, I'm on the golden path part where you have to divide your forces, so... Yeah, okay. So what does Benedict want to do in battle? And where does he want to be positioned? So as a utility, he generally doesn't want to be on the front lines, but he is, he is a little tanky. He's not like... Like, pretty much nothing is tanky in hard mode, and what I mean by that is, even if, like, you're looking at, like, Eridor, if he gets hit with two, like, by two spells from enemy mages, he's dead. They, he'll take, like, 300 damage a hit, and he'll die. So even though he's, a, like, a tank, he's he's not tanky enough that he can just, like, straight up avoid death from, you know, too many sources. Like, if two or three enemies hit you, you're generally dead. Unless, like, for example, he gets hit by, like, other shield users, which deal low damage anyways. So, alright, so, Benedict usually wants to be in the back lines uh, with the healers. So it's usually a good idea to have him far back and just buffing things, and then using now on units that benefit from that. So, so you can see here, like, if we look at the turn order, he's going first. Um, or it looks like Milo's going first, he's going second. So that's pretty good. So he wants to be in the back. So we'll begin this. He basically just wants to buff things and be done with it. He just wants to use now on offensive mages. Uh, you want to feed these these mages and, you know, maybe rangers if you're using like Archibald or something. You want to feed them TP with Medina and Julio or just Medina. And he wants to just sit back and use utility skills on things. And then sometimes he'll, he'll whack enemies as well. Uh, so I'm just going to move Milo up here. Alright, so right away, I can Dragon Shield. I would say this is a little bit better than using now in this case, uh, because the enemies aren't even within range, so I might as well just defensively use Dragon Shield. And then I can double item with Medina and have her give him two TP back, and then he can now, once it's his turn. So we can do that. I think I forgot to buy items though, so we'll see. Yeah, we have... Oh, I can use these. Oh, no, I can't. It has to be healing items. I forgot to buy healing items, so... Um, alternatively... She can just straight up make it someone's turn. So, let's see. Let's just make it your turn. And then she can do something like this. That's fun. But this is this is like how how Benedict plays. Like he just kind of hangs back and buffs things, and then you feed him TP, and that's pretty pretty useful. Uh, I'm gonna move him. I don't want to be I don't want to be too exposed. I guess I'll just put him here. Whatever. <laughs> I want him to use King Shield, and then this guy can do the thing he likes to do. Maybe we kill. Yeah, we'll, we'll just hit that for some damage. Move him. We'll just keep him in the back line here. Alright, she is unupgraded, and she's also a veteran, as you can see, so she's just, like, having a hard time. I just got her. She'll just whack this guy. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> She'll just whack him. But Benedict isn't really hard to run. He's, like, if anything, he's one of the most straightforward units in the game. He's just, like, pure... Pure utility. You just use him for his big value utility or his buffs, 
and then sometimes he contributes by whacking things. That's pretty much all you need to know about him, to be honest. Uh, there's like like for specific strats where you like use now in certain ways. Um, it, it's up to you how you use now because it's a very versatile skill. Like you can pretty much, damn, seventy five percent paralyzed. That's crazy. Zona is proving to me that she's really good with like I mean her her average paralyze is like sixty percent against same leveled units or maybe fifty, but that's still pretty good because she hits fat damage. So okay. So what do we want to do here? We'll do this. We'll get our boy. So similar to Benedict, Medina has like a cheaper now that's quite insane to be honest. Like Medina might be better. She's probably just better than Benedict. <laughs> she's, she's like her and, and Kohog. I think that's how you say his name. Let me look at his... Wait, do I have him on here? Or no, there's only... Okay, I'm, I'm not running him currently. Uh, but her and, and, the, and Kohog are insane. Um, Alright, so... In this situation, I could run up and whack this, but then I could get hit by three different things. If I had to guess, I could probably tank it. So we'll just do that. Because he's low on TP, so he can deal some chip damage. And he has a he has a invincibility frame. Like, or an iframe. He has a... It's a fighting game term. He has a, an invincibility for one attack, so... Okay, so she's doing her thing. Uh, yeah, I would have I would have liked to spike everyone's TP, but unfortunately we're in this situation, so I'll just do this even though it's not. Or maybe I should. Uh... What are you at? All right, I'm gonna do this even though it's kind of weird. I'm gonna blue knight this. I'm basically just making it so it can't cast a spell, and then she steals a TP, which is nice. All right, we got the old guy. Wow, I could have just killed it. <laughs> Whatever. All right, he'll just hang back. So yeah, so that's Benedict. Uh, pretty good unit. There's really nothing wrong with him. I would say when you're on like New Game Plus and like New Game Plus Plus and stuff like that, you're probably better off just running like Medina uh, because she's insane. She can she can heal things. She can restore TP. She can make people now for two TP. Like she can get the effect of now for two TP, which is ridiculous. So, like, when you're on, like, New Game Plus and, like, New Game Plus Plus, like, she's probably the metagame, for sure, more so than Benedict. And he's he's probably, like, like B plus tier, and she's, like, straight up S tier. And she can also heal, and she has, like, these... She has so many insane abilities, and she can just keep resetting people and keep healing them and giving them TP. Like, she's, like, a combination of Benedict and Julio. Uh, she, she can't let things tank as hard, because, obviously, Dragon Shield is good so like all these units can just get hit and they'll take zero damage and prevent prevention is really good in any tactical game uh, and there's also the the saying uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure so the idea that you can prevent units from taking damage in the first place is really useful in a lot of situations all right this guy needs levels badly so what can you kill if anything I guess he can Fury this. 90%. Cool. I'm not so sure about Flan again, but we'll see. We'll see how he does. Alright, so she'll just kind of walk forward and just, like, nuke something. Nuke this guy. Why not? But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to know about Benedict. He's a good unit. And he brings a lot of utility to the table. And he has, like, some chip damage, but essentially everything he can do, aside from Dragon Shield, Medina can just do better. Um, but he still is really solid, and you don't get Medina until, like, a few chapters in anyways. So, and, or, like, for your first playthrough, she costs money to use all of her abilities, which can be kind of a turnoff. And her big value is when your economy is, like, insane, and you can just continually spam... 750 gold items the you know the basic ranged uh, Recovery pellet or whatever that hits up to five like allies total and each one of them gets a TP from that That's where you get like big value from her So like for your first playthrough, she's not nearly as good as Benedict unless you plan on farming a lot of money uh, but for like new game plus and new game plus plus and like very end game stuff. She's in she's absolutely insane so, so yeah, that's it for Benedict. Uh, let me know if I missed anything, or I, I specifically didn't go over like any advanced tactics with him because that's going to come up in a different video. 
where I go over like unit tactics and stuff like that. Uh, the reason I'm saving that for a different video is because I don't want the videos to run too long and I feel like it, it'd be best for me to learn how every single unit is individually before I start making videos on advanced tactics for coordination. I am about to beat the game a second time on hard mode, uh, but I still have a lot to learn. So I would prefer it to start, like, just do, you know, run units for a, a lot of chapters, get really used to their mechanics, uh, learn as much about them as I can, and then from there, uh, just kind of, you know, make basic tutorials per unit, and then do advanced tutorials later for, like, endgame tactics. And, you know, other people are going to discover metagame stuff, too, because a lot of people are playing this game. So there's going to be a lot... A lot of people contributing to the knowledge base of this game so so yeah we'll start with the basic ones for now and then move on to other ones but if you like this type of content uh, definitely like this video and subscribe to this channel I'm gonna be making a ton of triangle strategy content as well as uh, going over like tactics and I'll probably do some three houses content too it depends because it seems like three houses is kind of like like, there's so many tutorials for Three Houses, it's almost not worth it to do. I like to cover things that haven't been covered yet, or that, like, haven't been covered fully, so... Looks like Alvor is probably dead. Unless I do... This. But yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, and also drop a comment if you want, uh, letting me know uh, what kind of tactics you use, what you find best, uh, if Benedict is a good unit or not, why or why not. And yeah, thanks for checking this out, and I'll see you in the next video.